Coming up, an easy DIY solar installation that will run things like a refrigerator and lights in an outdoor area. Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm building a low budget solar power system. It's a work in progress. This same setup would work in a van, a four wheel drive or an RV. First up, the MPT7210A charge controller. These have been around for a while. I both love and hate them. I read on the internet that somebody installed XT60s on them. What a great idea. The charge controller is cheap at $75 but it has a few drawbacks. They're only light duty, you can't connect solar panels in series, and the cooling fan likes to fail. Fortunately that's an easy fix. Maybe a 3D printed support bracket would go well here, but I'm just going to use some silicon to help prevent any possibility of it shorting on the aluminium case. There we go. Not pretty, but functional. Now let's make some cables. These are a common type of solar panel quick connector. They're a crimp on. Probably not a good idea to solder these for a standard house installation. I'm making an adapter to the XT60. It's all about simplicity. I can plug the solar panels in one end and the other into the charge controller. The cable may look a bit underrated, but it's okay for the current it will be carrying. Besides, it's all I've got right now. That's one done. This plugs from the charge controller onto the battery terminals via an extension cable. And the other. This one connects the charge controller to the solar panels. Put out a switch, but a quick connector is simple and does the same job. Running the extension cable, this is under a sink, I'll make sure it never leaks. Next my 12 volt 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I bought it in 2018 and never used it. Surprisingly it might actually be 2000 watt and pure sine wave. The batteries, two 12 volt 100 amp hour LIFEPO 4s, they were suspiciously cheap. Disconnecting one of them for now. 30 volt 250 watt solar panels. I found these on Facebook Marketplace. They came off a building that was flooded. The grid tie inverter went underwater. I offered the guy $200 for six of them, including mounting hardware. Did I pay too much? And the blocking diodes, I checked that they were okay. You might criticize my soldering, but take a look at this. It was concealed watertight under some heavy duty heat shrink. This was installed by a professional with professional tools, but why does it look so bad? Just the two panels for now. Where I leave mounting them horizontal is almost ideal. I'll bolt them down later, there's no risk of them blowing away. They're connected in parallel with two ready-made plug-in joiners. Parallel works best with cheap charge controllers like the MPT7210A. You can't go poking 60 to 100 volts in here. Despite its flaws, this charge controller has a fantastic LCD and UI. It's all configured for 14.6 volts. For some reason the load isn't displaying. The fridge mode is running, it's nice and cool. In the middle of the day the sun's out, but we're only getting one and a half amps. Why? Let's have a look at the solar panels. 
they're shaded by a palm tree. Try again. That's it. Don't worry about the tree, it had to come down anyway, and we have hundreds more. Instant results. I'll leave this video here. If you're interested in any of the products, check the links in the description. But also wait for the next video where I'll go into a few problems I encountered. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps me with the algorithm. I'm near 1000 subscribers and would love to be able to monetize this channel. Thanks for watching.